My name is Dave Morrow. Nine months of each year, I live out of my vehicle. I travel the wilderness by foot on an endless backpacking and landscape photography trip. I want to teach and share the photography and outdoor skills that I use on these trips. I don't want to spend hours editing video or sitting in front of a computer, so I made some rules. First, everything shot on GoPro. This was the best way I found to record quickly on a consistent basis. Second, I can only spend 20 minutes editing each video. So thanks for watching and welcome to the Landscape Photography Journals. So when I started doing photography full time about four years ago, I was completely consumed by trying to boost my brand and get more people to see my work. So I was spending all my time on social media and the internet. And then that same year I started coming out to places like this. And slowly I started coming out more and more and more. And then slowly I started doing less and less work on the computer. And eventually I was thinking, well, at the end of your life, do you want more people to see your photos? Or do you want more time to spend out here and to actually take photos? So at that point, I decided to quit all social media. I decided to quit everything that didn't make me truly happy on a consistent basis. Because I watched the previous six years of my life go by where I spent at a desk doing engineering. And that was a good learning experience, but those years went by so fast that I know now that I'm doing something that I enjoy all the time that they'll go by even faster. So I want to maximize every single second I can spend out here. So if I lose money in certain parts of my business because I'm not promoting myself, I'm not advertising, I'm not doing a bunch of stuff I don't really like to do, I don't care if I lose money. As long as I have enough money that I can get by and then I can spend at least eight or nine months of the year out here doing this stuff. Then the other three months I can spend editing videos at home, editing photos, and just relaxing and resting and planning for new adventures. And I think if I lived any way else, photography would become a job for me instead of something I truly love to do. It's not something I want to lay on my deathbed and think, wow, if you added up all the hours, you just spent five years of your life on social media promoting yourself. You just spent five years of your life doing taxes and accounting. You just spent five years of your life responding to emails. You could have spent that total of 15 years time out here. That's what you'll really want back in the end. So I either pay people to do all that stuff, which is expensive, or I just quit and don't do that stuff at all. So in the end, I can have more time doing exactly what I want to do. And that's a mentality that I never want to lose. It's a mentality that makes me happy and that allows me to drive myself to take my photography to places that I didn't think I could before. So if you guys are struggling with thinking about doing stuff you don't like to do in your life, decide you're gonna lose some money and not do that thing. A lot of people will say, well, I can't quit social media. I can't stop doing this. I can't stop doing that because I'll lose money. Well, the only thing you have that is limited is time. Who cares about the money? If you have enough to get by, if you can support yourself and you can get out here more often, it'll make you happier. Trust me, it did for me. As I just got back to camp, uh, I was out in the woods shooting. Covered about eight miles today, cranked it out. And last week's video I showed my shooting that I just talked about. Um, and how I got down to this beach via a pack raft, via a hike through the old growth rainforest. But tonight, looks like it will be a good sunset. It's hard to tell. I think I'm gonna shoot facing down this way right here. I wanna shoot all those really nice trees on that point jutting out when they're getting this nice backlight when the sun's setting right here. I think this whole coastline will probably light up in like a warmish pinkish glow. And then the foreground will have all those waves, but I'm gonna eat dinner real quick, wait till the sun gets within a few degrees of the horizon, and I'll just go down in there and shoot that. Looks like I might get skunked out of this shoot. Look out there on the horizon, that huge band of clouds, it's called the marine layer. It just sits out over the coast, low pressure system. So a lot of times when you're shooting on the coast, the sun will just drop behind that, disappear. See all the lights gone down here. But 
still some nice fog rolling in, some mist. Trying to go down and shoot that a little bit, see if I can get anything. So I just walked, I don't know, half a mile down from my camp. What I really want to shoot is all this mist kicking up. There's some really nice isolated trees that are coming down on these banks. And those banks are all forest, just like all these forests that I hiked through on that hike earlier. But what I really need to work for this shot to get pulled off is I need some color up in the sky right there. So you can see the sun's getting blocked up by that marine layer. I'll show you the composition I want to shoot here. I want to first focus on these waves. I'm going to get a few exposures for the waves using different shutter speeds. And then I'll get one for this background once twilight kicks in, or blue hour, I should say. So I'm going to take my single point spot focus here and bring it right down on these waves in the foreground. Zoom in at 100%, grab a focal point. That looks good. I'm going to go with F11 here. That gives me 1.3 second shutter speed. So I'm going to pull up my histogram. And that looks good. I could push it a little bit further right using exposure compensation if I needed to. So everything looks good there. Now my goal for this is like my rivers and streams video, which I'll link above, where I'm capturing a few different shots at different shutter speeds and then I'll see what they look like in the final result and blend them together. And I think I'm gonna get skunked on this sunset. All the colors starting to die, especially back here, but I'll keep shooting and see what happens. I thought it was gonna be a good one, but you never know. So 1.6, I'll take one at 1.6 first. What I'm also gonna do is I'm going to, watching the back of the screen here, warm up the white balance just a little bit. So it looks a little bit more like what I'm shooting out there. So I think that looks about right. All right, so we'll give that a try for first round of settings. So I'm just gonna click the shutter button when these waves right here roll through. And that's making everything look really soft in the foreground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this probably in about a quarter by going up a few stops in ISO. So I'll go up to 250, maybe 320. That kicks that down to about a half second. Take another shot there. Now, when you're shooting in the forest or rivers and streams, you always have water moving through constantly. So it's a lot easier to get a really nice shot of that. When you're shooting waves like this, you only have big waves roll through every once in a while. So you kind of got to wait until they roll through like that and you got to time it just right. There's one. Now I just need to wait for one to roll through right in the foreground where I want it to show up in the final image. So like right there. And even that's a little bit too blurry. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go down to F over eight. My goal is to have a little bit snappier shutter speed here. So I'll go F eight here, drop me to a quarter. And then I will drop my EV a little bit more. Get me to a sixth of a second shutter speed. The reason I did that is because I already went up to 320 ISO. I don't really want to go much above that to get too much image noise. So I'm looking at these waves out here, seeing them come through, and I will push the shutter button down, see what I can get. There's a little bit more movement in the foreground of that one. Take one more there. And, and the nice part about that technique is that if I don't like one or two of them, I have a bunch of backups that I can kind of work off of. Nice night out. 
Sometimes I feel like being a, a landscape photographer, I don't enjoy this enough. I'm out here constantly and sometimes I have the bad habit of just seeing it like I need to go out there and get images all the time or I need to go out there and knock it out like step by step by step. And I feel like I don't sit back and just enjoy and relax and have a good time enough. But something I try to work on. If I remember that I'm doing that and making that mistake, it's easy to have a good time. But sometimes I just get caught in the moment of constantly shooting. There goes a wave. Get that one. Constantly researching new spots to go to. And then when I'm out there, I'm just working physically really hard all day. So it's almost like a black hole and once I get in from the trip, I'm like, what just happened? I don't remember any of the trip. Oh yeah, key when you're shooting out in the sand, if you're shooting water that's coming in, when that tide comes in over your tripod and then it's going back out, just push down on the tripod and it will just sink down into the sand. Then it won't move when the next bit of waves come in. I like the wave moving in this one. That's a lot more dynamic. It's moving a lot more. I'm going to go to 400, get that to a fifth, go down to F over 6.3 and get it to an eighth. And I'll try one or two more exposures when these waves come in. I got to say, the beach. I'm being a downer. The beach is my least favorite ecosystem. I did enjoy the hell out of that rafting trip. I like being on the beach. It's huge down here. It feels really cool. But there's something about being up in the mountains that just pumps my adrenaline up to the next level. I think it's because when you're up in the mountains, there's always something like out to get you. When you're on the beach, it's almost like vacation relax mode. And I have a hard time relaxing. So maybe that's why. I always got to keep moving. I like those waves in the foreground there. So I think we can blend all these together in the foreground at least and get something out of it. So now I'm going to refocus back on these trees to make sure I have a sharp image back there. So I'll just zoom in at 100, focus on them. And now I'm going to switch up my settings here. I'm going to drop it back to ISO 100 F11 because I don't care about the foreground here. I just took care of that with that other exposure. But yeah, like the mountains are my go-to and maybe it's because I've been down on this beach before for some place that I've already been to. It's not ever the adrenaline rush as it was the first time you go to it. It's almost like that adventure factor. For some reason, I'm always trying to like push myself to the next level of adventure or do things that make me really nervous or really scared or not know what's going to happen in the final outcome. And if I'm not constantly doing stuff like that, I get bored. So maybe that's a bad personal trait, or maybe it's a good one. I have yet to find out. Make sure these trees are sharp. Nice and misty back there. Maybe I can make this into like a, a good black and white type image. Yeah, see how that marine layer just completely killed all that nice light? This is still getting a little bit more colorful though. It's an awesome night out. Eventually the moon should be coming up right up in there. My tent's back over there. Another pro tip. Since there's not good light, I'll just keep rambling on with all the tips. Um, if you're ever coming down to the beach to camp and you're on the wild coast, I meaning it's just a wilderness coast, one thing to always look out for is are you close to like a stream where you can get fresh water? I remember the first time that I came out here and I was doing like a solo backpacking trip. It was like a 60 or 70 mile trip and it went the whole way down this coast. You can go like 60 miles down that way. You hit a few rivers coming out, but there's nothing but wilderness. And I camped the first night. This is when I first got into backpacking. I was like, this is freaking awesome. So I was all pumped up, I had my fire going, and then I was like, I'm really thirsty, where do I get water? 
oh, I'm near an ocean. I can't get water out of the ocean. And I found out I had to hike like three miles down the coast to find a stream, which I didn't know where it was. Um, so that's the thing to look out for. Then you can sit around the fire and enjoy it instead of having to hike. I actually like that last exposure. It's almost just like smooth action in the foreground. A little bit of light kicking off back there. See what the histograms look like. They look good. I'll take it. As it is early the next morning, maybe you can see the moon out behind me, but starting to get some nice light down this way. So I was gonna shoot it with this stream in the foreground. All right, so for this shot, got everything leveled out. And I'm just looking for all the nice color here. I have this stream moving in the foreground and I have those sea stacks in the background. So there's so much color in the scene that there's really not a whole lot of detail in the rest of the scene. And that's the one downside I've found about shooting a lot of ocean scenes is that unless you have really massive sea stacks or something like rocks in the immediate foreground, there's really not that much interesting detail you can pick up unless you shoot macros or close up like that. But we'll see how this one turns out. I'm just walking around because it's a nice morning and taking some shots. I can't just sit in my tent if it's a good sunrise. So I'll just focus about halfway in, which is the approximate hyperfocal for this lens. Right there, and I'm gonna shoot at F11. Pull my histogram up. And my histogram's pushed way over to the right here. Since I'm shooting red and pink and orange, which blow out very quickly, I'm gonna use my EV here, and I'm shooting aperture priority mode just to back this down about a half to two thirds of a stop. Now I can see a lot more vivid pink detail up there. And I have a one second exposure and I'll just fire off that first shot there. Now I'm gonna take a few different shots here, a few different shutter speeds and see what the different wave action looks like. So I can see the waves roll in here on the left hand side of the shot. We'll see what this first one looks like, looks good. Here comes a wave right here in the foreground. So I'll fire off another one. Nice movement there. And now I'm gonna up my ISO and that'll allow me to drop my shutter speed, making it a little bit faster or snappier so I can collect more detail on that wave action. So now up to ISO 200, that's one over 2.5. fire off another shot. So this is the same technique that I use for forests, rivers, and streams. I use it for oceans. I used it last night in the previous shoot. And it's just to have a few different shots of a few different water details. You can kind of compare and contrast when you get back on the computer. And then you're not guessing if you got the right shot or not. That has some nice wave detail back there in the background as well. And I'll take one of this wave coming in here. See that nice wave movement that it's gonna capture. And that's the direction I was shooting last night. I was hoping that would catch some light this morning, but it really didn't do much at all. Has some nice wave detail in the foreground. I like all this reflected light, all that nice color my tent right up there. I ended up not making a fire last night. I'm reading this really interesting book about, um, it's called Bell Labs, which was a subsidiary and worked with AT&T back in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And they're talking about the invention of the transistor and what became modern computing. So I got sucked into that book for like four hours yesterday. So I went right to my tent after sunset and started reading that book and I was up until like midnight reading it. I almost missed sunrise because of that. So that's a cool shot, I like that one. So I'll check the focus point, which I didn't do before, but it looks good. And I checked the histograms. See the red's pushed pretty far over to the right, but it's not hanging off the edge. I could probably go up another, I don't know, 
one third of a stop, two thirds of a stop, and it'd be all right. Then I'll bring this down to F over eight to try a quarter of a second for some of these waves back in here. But today I'm gonna pack up, get my pack raft loaded back on my heavy backpack, and I'm gonna hike out to my vehicle. It's been a really nice trip out here. It's really cool to be able to start a trip on a raft, and then after you go on that raft for a few days, have the ability to jump down over a rainforest onto the coast of the ocean and then exit by beach. I don't feel like getting these boots wet. I have sandals on usually, which I brought down with me, but I saw the sunrise going off and I just threw boots on as quick as possible. But anyway, I'm gonna get packed up. We'll see how these images look. I'll do a post-trip review so we can look through all the different images I took on this trip, which really aren't that many because it was mostly about hiking and exploring and just being outside. I needed to uh, get away from what I was currently doing and take a little break and get some adventure. I like this one a lot. I like the separation between the color and the water there and in the foreground as well. But I think those will work. So time to get packed up. So I came from way down there about eight miles on the beach. Hiked up the beach. And I'm headed out this way. The coast. And British Columbia is right up there. You can actually see the mountains on the BC coast. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but they're there. My friend Derek and I camped in this spot one time and it was wet, soaking wet, pouring about this time of year. We had our tents right here. When we woke up in the morning, it was just like a big puddle of wet. It's a really nice area though. You can see all this junk washes up from the ocean. Huge ropes, buoys. Over here is a life preserver. Who knows if that person made it out alive. They might be at the bottom of the ocean. There's some old pallets. If all that stuff's up on this shore, I can't imagine how much junk's in the actual ocean unfortunately. It's kind of sad. All right, back into the woods on the trail. <laughs> 